All right, got that out of the way. So, all right, look, welcome, welcome, welcome back to another chit chat with me. I am the Black Opinionated Woman, also known as a bow. So, look, let's just get right on into it. We just go run through my things. Okay, look, I talk about three things Black women, Black culture, anything related to middle age to include parenting, shows, career, my feelings, my hair. You know. Okay. We're through with that. All right. So what are we really talking about today? We're talking about, and just like that, episode nine, the shenanigans continue. So um, let me see. Let me see. First of all, um, let me um, stop sharing for one second. I am going to pull up a different thing, what I was going to share with you. So I like to remind people what they're looking at. Is this it? Okay. All right. So if you came to my channel, this is what you selected. OK, now I want to explain this thumbnail for a second. You see that little beanie cap? I now associate that with Miranda because see, she's a full on dumb dumb. She is stupid. I started to put a dunce cap on, but I don't like the pointy thing. And it just it stresses me out. It makes me think of like some other things like the KKK or something. So, you know, we're not going to do that. But I chose this cap because I believe she's a lesbian now. I don't know what's going on. She's a full on lesbian after a few weeks. So, and she's stupid. So she gets the beanie cat with the little thing. It's like being in a circus, like din, 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 din. that's, that's Miranda. Okay. All right. So what you see here is LTW. We'll get to her in a second. In my mind, she's drop kicking Miranda in the head. Let me take this banner off. So anyway, we're doing episode nine of season one of, and just like that. And I gave it a five out of 10. Okay, we're gonna take that. Uh, I'm gonna take that off the screen here. Now, um, I'm gonna share with you something else. Okay, now it was poorly done, but we're gonna do this because I just think it's necessary. This it's it's just where I'm at with it. Okay, all right. Do you guys see this? Oh, I gotta take that stupid thing off. I'm looking at the wrong. You guys can see that I did this in Canva, right? So let's try this again. I'm gonna go ahead share the right thumbnail. You know, I am like so trifling. Nope. Nope. Where was it? Oh, I was so prepared for this and yet I wasn't. What happened to my situation? Give me two seconds here. There we go. Do you see this? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I want to go ahead. This is what I'm feeling right now. This is what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm not even going to get into the start of this yet. This is what I'm feeling. I feel like we need a full on march. We need to have a protest. We need to call in all the activists. We need the people who want to save the trees. We want the people who save the whales. We need Al Sharpton. We, we need everybody. We need the whacked out manosphere, the black manosphere. We need the white manosphere. We got to save Steve's dignity, his balls, his masculinity. Because they have effectively, they have killed off Steve. Now, he's not killed off in the show, but I don't know who this is. Okay, let me go ahead and I'll get out of that before you guys look at me like I'm crazy. So I just want to take a moment of silence, about two or three seconds, to remember Steve. I will remember you. Okay, so look. We're not going to judge my singing, but this reminds me of a Sarah McLaughlin moment. I believe it was Sarah McLaughlin. She's the one to sing Adia, right? This is this is what's going on because I don't know. All right, so let me get right on into it and me add this to the stream here. These are my takeaways. No justice, no peace. <laughs> or maybe I should say no justice, no Steve. Five out of 10, there was a volunteer scene. We'll get on into that. Miranda makes me full on want to cuss all the way. She makes me want to cuss. I want to drop some F-bombs. <laughs> the shenanigans. Charlotte is still stupid. And I, I think I could be a writer for the show. I think I could write for the show. I believe there are things that we could have done. There's so much that we could have done post big dying. We could have done so much more with growing ding dong Charlotte. We could have had the, um, we could have had like the show finesse us into Miranda's sudden lesbianism. 
We could have, there's so much, there's so much. Steve did not have to be done this way. We couldn't handle um, the Samantha storyline or that lack there of better. I don't know. I don't know. This is just, just a lot. This is a lot. <laughs> but yes, this little cap here, wherever I see Miranda, I think I got them all. This is going to be a cap situation. There's so many ways I can go with this because there's the urban way of saying that's cap, meaning it's shenanigans, it's lies, it's you're, you're, you know, you're full of it. But I chose that beanie cap because it's like, it makes me think of dum-dums, but it also, I think, is symbolizing the fact that I guess she's a lesbian now, and I believe that is the symbol of the rainbow flag. So there's all kinds of things that go with this cap. <sighs> Let's get on into it. All right, the girls' lunch. As they do. Now, I like a good lunch scene because it's kind of like what they do, okay? Girls lunch. Well, I shouldn't say girls. These are women. Now, here are my, let me get into my notes. Carrie, I know, I know this is a little dark. It wasn't clear. I had to like, you know, beg, borrow, and steal from various places to get these photos. So look, Carrie is talking about her, her um, experiences with the date that wasn't a date that could be a date. Oh, I'm over it. All right. Charlotte is still stupid with these weird dresses. Now, maybe I'm the only one who was like really irritated by the Pollyanna looking thing, but I just kind of feel like, I don't know. Today's 55, um, woman and man, at least the people that I know, are not, they're still popping and locking, okay? And maybe I'm just living in a bubble. That could be entirely true, but they're not walking around doing that weird thing that she does, like she's got a seizure or something. I don't know. But anyway, what I do like was how shady she was, which, you know, I, I can enjoy a little bit of petty. I actually can enjoy a little bit of petty. So she was basically like, well, I'm not like you have hers. You know, I don't get the hot flashes and I don't get this and I don't have brain fog and I don't have any of those things. So I was here for a little bit of pettiness. Like I thought that part was actually cute. I don't understand the weird dressing that she's doing. I wish I could have gotten a better picture. I like the bag though, but I'm just kind of like, why do they put her in these dresses? Like it's like they're trying to memorialize her from 15, 20 years ago. And I think that it would have connected better with um, the regular people who actually watch this show. But anyway, you already got, you guys already know how I'm feeling about the Charlotte situation. She still sucks. I'm going to always say it until they do something about this whacked out character that they have for her. All right. So we're going to go on to this next one here. Lisette, the beautiful Lisette. So basically there's a little bit of shade thrown here too, which I was here for. She's like, <laughs> She's pandering to Carrie, like, hey, can you like wear my jewelry and, and like post it on social media? Because I wouldn't want to have to go back to modeling. So could... <laughs> I was here for the shade. Like, honestly, it was kind of cute. This scene didn't bother, bother me. I mean, she was totally pandering to Carrie, talking about, I, I mean, I listened to your podcast, like buttering her up. But anyway, I just, the only thing that, that struck me, what struck me was like this, it was just so awkward, this awkward reference to Big's death, okay? I don't know why the writers continue to do this. Let me tell you something. We need to protest against these writers because, <sighs> let me just say this. I have not listened to a single one of the, was it the Writer's Room podcast or whatever it is they have out there because I didn't want them to taint my opinion of the show, okay? Like, I wanted to give my my observations right then and there. I don't even know what I just said. Did I say observations? I thought I said that. Okay. I wanted to be right then and there. It was pure. They were, they, they'll, they'll be mine because um, I like to get mine out so that I'm not listening to anybody else's thoughts about it. And then that way it, it, they are what they are. So the, I just feel like these writers, I don't know why they have to constantly remind us that big is gone. We know that he's dead. He's all the way dead. They tell us all the time. Here we are, nine episodes in. By the way, did you know that big guy? I'm like, we got it. Next. All right. So this is the thing. This was the Rock. Her name is Rock. I guess previously Rose, now Rock. Um, bar Mitzvah. It's not a bar Mitzvah per se, but I called it bar Mitzvah scene because that was what stood out to me when so 
ding, ding dong, Charlotte was sitting at the table. And I guess she was talking to Rock, Rock. Sorry, I got to remember all the new names. Rock, Rose now Rock about the whole bar mitzvah thing. So I wanted to put this picture up, by the way, because this is a beautiful picture of this, this young lady. But the real reason that they're having this scene is this brat of a child, Lily. Now, let me just say for a rocker, I am not here for violence or anything, but she is just too much. Like she needs one of her nine lives snatched. She's doing too much. But anyway, she's concerned about getting her cycle on a party and everything like that. And Charlotte's still walking around in these crazy dresses like she's getting ready to have tea. And she just looks stupid. But this little brat, she does too much. But I do like the little haircut they had for Rock. I gotta remember the name. But I, the thing is, this little girl is self-absorbed. And I just feel like they, they were talking about, they start introducing this concept, if I remember correctly, about, um, so she was talking about uh, oh, tampons. Now, I don't know if this is a cultural thing. So for all my blackity black blacks out there, maybe you can, maybe, I mean, I think that we probably think about this differently than um, the non-blackity black blacks. I can't even get the words out. You would think I had wine already. I don't have anything. At least growing up, the tampon situation was something that was not introduced to me as a young woman. I didn't get that until, I don't know, I was in like college and actually really even out of college. I was still, wearing, <laughs> was more than you want to know about my, my situation. But the point I'm making is that is not something I don't think culturally we do that that young. And so I don't want to make assumptions about other cultures, but I know the people that I know, like we weren't sticking things up in there that at least unless you, unless you were like sexually active or something. So this whole tampon, I guess to me, and maybe I'm just out of touch and I'm like an auntie now, but like to me, like that scene did not resonate for me, but I'm just chalking it up to maybe it's a cultural thing. I don't know. But I know most of the people I know, the black and black blacks, we weren't using tampons at 15. We weren't. Like, that was like a full-on offense. Like, a tampon? That was almost like, <gasps> you know, it was just kind of like gasp. Clutch the pearls. Did I just spit on myself? All right. Let's move on past this scene because there's not a whole lot to go on. They wanted to introduce basically what's going to be coming up, which is Tampon Gate. So this is all just a precursor to Tampon Gate. Next. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just talk about this for a second. At first, I really thought my issue was with Shay because I can't determine if I like her or not. Sometimes I really just can't stand her. But I don't think my issue is with Shay. I think my issue is with Ding Dong Miranda. There goes the stupid hat because she's always sitting there with that stupid face fawning like, I'm like, I can't understand her. And then this is the thing at this dinner. So look, Shay um, thinks Miranda looks pretty. Miranda still sucks. I had to throw in a gratuitous Miranda still sucks. Okay. Um, so Shay has a bunch of fangirls coming over, you know, like requesting a picture. And then Miranda's like, I'm willing to take a picture. Now, this is when Miranda thrusts <laughs> upon Shay <laughs> Miranda's idea of what their relationship status is after uh, uh, 2.5 nanoseconds. So in Miranda's mind, they are now girlfriend and them them friend. I don't even know what to call it because you can't call it, you can't say she, you can't say her, you can only call them them and they, but I don't know what this relationship thing is. The whole thing is kind of confusing to me. And so Fans run down Shay's sex history. Oh, you slept with this person and this guy and, and this moth and this, this animal. I'm joking. I'm joking. Hold on. All statements are alleged unless they're proven to be true or untrue or something. I don't know. Everything's alleged. Alleged. Okay. You know, just my opinions. The point I'm making is they're like, Shay, hey, I know someone that you've gotten down with the get down with and you slept with everybody in the free world. And they're like... So they're doing all this in front of Ding Dong Miranda, who, by the way, is officially stupid. And she's like, oh. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> she is so dumb. <laughs> so now she's telling them that she's the girlfriend to Shay. 
So I don't know if that makes him girlfriend and girlfriend, like I said, because I don't understand what happens if you don't go by a gender, you go by they and them. So what, what does that mean? I don't know. Someone educate me. Put it in the chat. So look, now she's trying to claim her and lock her down and Shay is giving her that look like simmer down, simmer down. <laughs> And Miranda doesn't know how to read the room. She's so emotionally unintelligent and she's so self-absorbed. <laughs> I, I can't. I, this is next. Let's just go on because there's more of Miranda and her dumb dumbness. Next. So it's so dark. I did not get really good photos and I didn't want to lighten them. So look, Sima and Carrie B clubbing. I tried to throw in a little bit of Abe. African-American vernacular English, formerly known as Ebonics. Okay, so look, Seema and Carrie go out to the club. So I have two slides on this, right? So basically, they want to get in. They can't get in. Seema tries to bribe the guy. <laughs> the shade of it all. And, oh, do I have it? No, I don't have the right one. Oh, it's, um, I just suck. Did I get rid of it? I thought I had two. That's my fault. So anyway, so look. They go to the club and the guy, if you see right here, I mean, obviously I did a really poor job of snapping these pictures. She seems like, well, I'm going to give you some coin. I'm going to give you some money. And the guy's like, I'm really offended, which I'm sure he wasn't because, you know, times are hard out here in these streets. But anyway, they can't get in the club. But so Carrie wants Seema to evalu evaluate the jewelry that she received. Hold on a second. Let me go back from this chick. Whoops. So remember, this chick is like, can you wear my rings? Can you do this? You know, totally pandering that whole nine yards because I don't want to have to return to being a model. <laughs> Love that shade, by the way. So anyway, so she's like, ask Asima about it. And then, so now Sarah's, I mean, I'm sorry. Carrie has to go on some sort of date and talk about it, blah, blah, blah. But this is coming up. Did I have it? I thought I had it on here. Yes, I want to keep this here for a second. So I just want to say, we're going to pause. Everyone, let's pause. I wish I had some sort of alarm or something. Notice that for the first time, Seema is not in some sort of brown or tan or neutral colored dress. And I need to take this time to remind you that she's practically perfect in every way. Seema is perfect. We can all agree on that. She can do no wrong. Okay. But anyway, so um, what we find out after <laughs> they're like... Negative Ghost Rider, you can't get into this club that is actually Seema's birthday. So that was a pleasant surprise to go out to, I don't know what that is, a late cocktail because they can't get into the club. But, um, you know, it's just a little bit on the pathetic side trying to figure out how to get in. But I kind of was here for it a little bit of shade because it's a little reminder, like you're not the hot young thing anymore. You're just like the hot older person because we like to be reminded in this show about how old we are. Okay. So anyway, Toast to, okay, so Seema and Carrie do a toast to their friendship and some age stuff and blah, blah, blah. Next. So back to the I hate Charlotte situation. You see this bottom right picture. So she was cooking in this dress. And it's kind of sort of cute, but I don't understand. No real person in the real world cooks in a full-on dress, hair done, makeup done, and heels. It's fake news. It's all the way fake. And she's still dumb. But this is how they introduced Tampon Gate. <laughs> tampon Gate was part of the show. I should have had a, an animated tampon. That's what I should have had. But I don't know. That could have been too much. Is that too much? <laughs> so Tampon Gate is introduced in the scene with this brat of a child. Lily wants to learn how to wear a tampon because she's all thinking about this whole party situation. But then Anthony arrives with this Justin guy. So this is the thing. They're preparing for a dinner with Anthony and his beau, boyfriend, I don't know, boo thing, just friend, F boy, whatever he is. Talkable moment. I love doing talkable moments. If you want to know what that is, let me know. So Charlotte's doing her whole like weirdness and talking like an idiot, telling Lily how to stick a ring and tampon up in her, her, her special situation. I don't understand why. I, like I said, it could have been a cultural thing, but I, I just didn't understand this scene. Like I didn't know that girls were getting tampons at 15. 
but I guess I get it. Like if you're a, um, if you're like an athlete or something, I don't know. But even still, when I, I was in sports and when I was younger, I just had to suffer with the, the situation, the thick freaking mattress <laughs> that I had to carry. So anyway, so she wants to know, and now Charlotte is sitting here trying to tell her how to do it. She, then she offers to show her the kitty cat on how to do it. Like that is not realistic to me. Because most of us who are Gen X, like our parents weren't like that. So I don't, I guess she's trying to be, I guess she's trying to break some generational cycles. I don't know, but I don't understand how you can be that open with wanting to show your cooter, but yet you're still walking around in these stupid Pollyanna dresses and carrying on. Like it just make it make sense. I'm telling you, she's stupid. Writers, I need to do a separate little video on why I feel like the writers have trolled us. This is just too much. Now, okay, now keep, keep stay with me. Charlotte is still an idiot. She's trying to tell her how to stick her leg and stick this object in her situation. Anthony shows up with Justin and somehow I don't even understand how he makes this whole thing about the Holocaust being a hoax. Like I don't, there's, there's so many things that's wrong with this situation. Okay, I don't care. I just don't even understand why you would need to bring it up. We know it's not a hoax. And I didn't even know that people actually thought that. So clearly I must live in a bubble because I guess this was supposed to, this was supposed to be a woke moment that really was just lost on me. Cause I'm like, wait a second, people think the Holocaust was a hoax? Like it's not even something that, I guess in light of what's going on in this country, and for those of you who don't know, I live in the United States, I don't even understand how that's even a joke, and maybe I'm taking it too serious. Now, I kept my hee-haws at a lot of things. I try to make light of a lot of racial things because sometimes, you know what, we just have to enjoy a good laugh. And stereotypes sometimes exist for a reason. But this moment was so lost on me. I was like, I don't get it. I don't get the joke. So then, of course, he kicks him out. But I just want to lean in on that because I'm like, where did that come from? It came from left field. It didn't even make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Why did they want us to get that joke? Now, I understand that Harry and and Charlotte are Jewish and she told him to watch the whole challah, hol the bread, but it didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense why they had to find a way. All the other times, look, Harry told us he was Jewish when he was getting his behind whooped in tennis. They didn't talk about the Holocaust then, but they that just it just didn't even make any sense. It wasn't funny to me. I mean, I wasn't you know, like in the corner sucking my thumb, rocking myself to sleep. I just didn't get it. I was like, and then he was like, you're gone. I mean, like, I guess they wanted to have Anthony have a, a an outburst or something, like have a moment. I guess that was his moment. It just, the whole thing was just so dumb. But getting back to Charlotte and her stupidity. So Anthony kicks him out. Um... She's still teaching about the tampon and everybody is sorry. She's sorry about something. Uh, Anthony had, to, he's sorry for bringing Justin. Um, Harry was sorry for burning the holla. And basically there were flashbacks at this moment, which I'm going to um, go to next. Do I have that? I don't know if I have it, but there were flashbacks where um, I don't have this scene, but okay. Carrie's getting ready to go on a date. But during this whole moment with Charlotte and her stupidity, it was a poignant moment when, uh, I'm sorry, Carrie in this ring, she couldn't take off her wedding ring. So instead she puts on Big's wedding ring. And so I was okay with that moment because to me, now a lot of people are going to want to like crap on this whole moment, but I kind of feel like she's trying to figure out how to grieve. And it's, it's, it's a piece of metal for whatever reason is close to her. Like, and I get that. I don't have a single problem with that scene. I'm sure somebody out there who's going to review this is going to have a problem with the scene, but I don't, I really don't. Because let me tell you something. If I were to lose my husband after I threatened to dive in with him, no, I mean, honestly, like, I, I don't know what I would do. And I say this, and this is like personal information, not real personal, but when my, when I was younger and my husband was younger when he used to travel and I had my 500 kids, I had these babies or whatever, when he would travel, I hated the idea of him leaving me. So there were two things that would happen. 
one, when I know he had to go to the airport, if I wasn't dropping him off, or maybe like a service was picking him up. One, when he left, I left because I never liked that feeling of he's leaving me. And two, I would strip all of the sheets off my bed because I could smell his aftershave and cologne and, and deodorant or whatever it was. Like he he has he has a certain smell. And so I, I didn't like smelling that if I was in bed and I could smell his cologne or what he smells like when he freshly showers and he puts on his deodorant and all his, his stuff, it reminded me of him. So in that moment, I was like, I get it. She wants to put on the ring, whatever. Now, Carrie goes on a date that wasn't a date. She's like the girl who cried wolf, but not really wolf. She's the one who cried date. So this is what I noticed. She didn't wear a bun this time. So I can tell that she's trying to soften her image a little bit. Maybe that's what it is. I could be looking way too much into it. And it's a weird fashion choice, but I'm like, okay. But the biggest thing was she shows up to her date that's now not going to be a date. And she's like, this isn't going to happen. And I'm just kind of like, that's fair. But it's like, you can't keep doing this. Let's go on a date. Let's not go on a date. Let's go on a date. Like, just get yourself together. Just take the time that you need. Like, there's no one is rushing you into dating. So she basically waits for him to arrive to tell him that she's not going to do the date. Now, he takes it well. But I'm just trying to think, like, how would I feel if I arrived on a date for a guy to tell me, look, we're not going to really take this date. And whether we both experience a loss or not, I don't know. I mean, you don't know what it takes for people to get themselves together. Maybe it took everything for him to come out of the house. I don't know. But I just kind of feel like she said she didn't want to do it over a text, but you don't want people wasting their time getting ready, anticipating prep, you know, um, preparing and you show up and it's like, ha ha, I was just joking. <laughs> Psych, this is a little jokey joke. She is so, so absorbed. It could, maybe I'm wrong. So like I said, I get it. You want to keep that ring next to you, but it doesn't understand why you would sit there and be like, ha ha, I was just joking. Girl cry date. <laughs> Miss me. All right. So like I said, at least this time she didn't have that crazy hard looking bun that made her look like, you know, grandma. And the, the, you know, whatever. But then this is what was so weird. I didn't think it was weird that her date had a voicemail of his ex-wife. Like, you don't know what people need to get through. But I thought it was weird that she wanted to hug it out. I'm like, how dare you? Because you could be smelling good or something. I don't know what's going on with this guy. Next thing you know, he might catch feelings. He might catch one of these. I don't know. I'm not saying he would because he's not like a child. I don't know. I just kind of felt like. Did we not even go through a pandemic, even though I think people are like over, like trying to do all these things, but it's, the whole thing, it just make it make sense. Carrie's a trip. All right, here we go. Back to Dum Dum. Here goes the cap again. There's the beanie cap. All right. Because, you know, I, I think she's full on stupid now because I don't know who this is. This is a completely new character. They killed off Miranda and they killed off some other people. So now we got Dum Dum. Dum Dum has the audacity. <laughs> the audacity, the unmitigated gall to show up unannounced. I'm like, we're too old for this. She's like, because, you know, they've aged the, the, the women like a million years. Like she's 500 years old now and she knows better, but she shows up at her crib, at her place. That's everybody's safe spaces should be unannounced. See, this is why I'm, look, let me tell you something. I'm trying not to cuss. But in my mind, there's some F-bombs that need to be dropped here because I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're already telling the fangirls that you're like the girlfriend now. You blew up your marriage. I'm, maybe she needs hormonal therapy. Someone like, I don't, who does these things? Who makes these weird decisions? Maybe I'm just different. I don't know. This shiggity is weird. She's showing up with cookies and carrying on like she's little red riding. <laughs> Like she is a thing bat. So she shows up unannounced and Shay's like, uh, 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 like, what's going on? <laughs> and she's sitting here like, uh, 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 uh wait, what? We're not a couple. <laughs> like, what are we? But I don't get it. 
So, you know, Shane's like, we're not dating. Miranda's like, we're not. She's having a conniption and she's practically running out, but not really. I don't, I don't look. The check is weird. She is full on weird. And let me tell you something. You know, Shay is going to end up breaking up with her, like for real, for real, because she's going to be like, you're a spies. You're not ready to be in this. I don't even know what kind of relationship this is because you can't say girlfriend and girlfriend because Shay does not identify as a woman. She identifies as non-binary conforming they them or something like that. So I can't say, I don't know what to call the relationship. I don't know what that means, right? Because I don't have the language right now and I should do some more history. But I don't, it's like the, the questions are weird. Like what are the right questions to ask? But look, so now weird old Miranda who now deserves to wear the stupid hat shows up. She's still stupid. She's doing this whole Meg Ryan reference and the, the, the cookies and... Okay. Shay is like, look, this is a cosplay. And she's like, and she doesn't like locking in relationships ba based on gender. Actually, I'm getting through this pretty good. But although we do have that big scene coming up. So then she said that they weren't dating, but she still affirms for Miranda about Miranda being the only one. And I guess that was significant because um, earlier when they were on their date, the, the fangirls come over and they're like, hey, Shay, I remember when you dated this one, 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 this one. Like an hour later, they're still like, yeah, you know, I know all these people that you were just like throwing down with, you little hoe. And, you know, ding dong, Miranda's like, I can't. This show has just gone so far off the, oh my gosh. All right next <laughs> so i have about six slides on this volunteer scene so of course everybody wants to text me while i'm doing this i have a bingo game thing to go to for some charity thing and so i'm bringing my daughter and they're talking about something i'll get back to my my friends later so look this is the volunteer scene now number one let me just say for the record i i <sighs> Who shows up to volunteer to do like work, like physical work in white overalls and in high like platform heels? Like, I get it. They want her to make fashion statements, but I'm like, there's so many moments when she should be making a fashion statement. Why is she making a fashion statement when it's time to get dirty? Okay. So this is the thing. All right, let's get into it. Carrie is like mentioning, I guess that, or I'm sorry, maybe it was Miranda. I can't remember. They She can't just write a check. Now, there's a whole bunch of references to, uh, I don't have a picture of Seema here. So <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it's kind of messed up. So Seema's like, you need to write that check. And Carrie's like, I can't because I'm, I, I'm not allowed. I'm white. And so Seema's like, well, I guess it's just hard now being a white woman. And she calls it out. She also calls out the fact that she's going to write it. Seema calls out the fact that, the fact that she's going to also write a check as a brown woman. Now, let me just say this. Seema can do no wrong. She's perfect in every way. I got to say that as many times as possible until it just, everyone just gets it, right? Like there's going to be a little bit of brainwashing. Seema is perfect and she can do no wrong. However, I didn't know how to receive the whole, <laughs> I didn't know if it was just to poke fun, but this is the thing. I felt like the writers, if you're going to have a moment when you're going to get on white women to talk about how, like, if you want to call out, what did I write down? Uh, writers gave her the trifling comment to echo sentiment. White women should be speaking the truth. Okay. So where I was going with that was if White women are feeling like they can't speak out or whatever, because there's a lot of people who feel white guilt. There's a lot of people who are afraid to speak, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's a real thing. It is a real thing. This is the thing. They should have had a white woman say it. They tried to water it down by having a brown girl say it. And I'm like, no, no, no. See, what we're not going to do is do that, right? What you don't do is it's so passive aggressive to have a brown person make those, those, those comments. But nevertheless, if that's the sentiment on how people feel, then I felt like the white woman, AKA Carrie in this woman should have just said it, just say it, just be clever on how you're writing it, but say it. You can't possibly have us have all these woke moments. Hey, we had Anthony come in with a guy who think who thought that the Holocaust was a hoax. 
But then you're going to punk out and have Seema say it instead of Carrie about, well, it's not okay to be a white woman now or whatever whatever the, the comment was. It's hard to be white now, something like that. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, honestly, Carrie should have just said it. Now, I'm sure people would have picked up on it and ran with it, but it, it would have come off as more authentic if somebody white had made the comment. Because there's people who do echo that sentiment. They feel that way. It's a real thing. Call a thing a thing. This is the problem I have. Okay, we're going to have a, a, a timeout situation here. Okay? This should only take about 20, 30 seconds, but just stick with me. This is the reason why we're all jacked up. No one wants to talk. Everyone is scared. And this is the thing. I feel like if you talk about things, you don't have to agree on everything. But you just have to respect each other's like spaces, right? You can't even come to any sort of common ground. I have people who don't look like me, who are my friends, and we don't agree on everything. But the one thing I am is I am firm in my position. And, and, they, and they listen, at least I think they do. And we don't have to always agree. But And then you can still have, at least I believe, healthy relationships. But all this tiptoeing around stuff, and I don't know if it's because I'm Gen X, but I just call a thing a thing. Now, I need to have another video. I wanted to talk about some other stuff. I just haven't had the time to get it together because I'm a very dysfunctional person. Can't you tell by my hair? Okay. Now, Steve, I mean, I'm sorry. Seema calls that out. Now, look at Steve. He looks normal here, but I just wanted you guys to take a look because this is probably one of the last few times you will see him looking like a, a normal person and acting normal. Although in this moment, he does call out to Carrie. He's like, hey, you know, you know like kind of like weird because I would have probably would have jumped. I'm like, whoa, wait, like, you know, hey, turn it down or turn it up. I don't know. We got to work it out. Don't worry about yelling. So Steve and Brady situation. So Brady, so Steve is like, hey, I'll work with Carrie and for, for the painting or whatever. And then Brady <laughs> like, um, I'm sorry, Miranda was like, I'll work with Brady. Brady's like, no, you will not. I don't work with my girlfriend or somebody. <laughs> but yeah, Steve was a full on weirdo in this moment. Like, I don't know what happened to his manhood. I don't even know if he has a pair down there anymore. And she has decimated his poor little little heart. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to go on the slide too. What's going on, computer? Keep up. I don't know why I enjoyed making this slide, but it was all the way funny to me. So you're going to have to stick with me. LTW, Charlotte, and some kids show up. <laughs> In a white stretch limo. And when that first happened, I was like, what is going on? So it was so funny to me because it was so outrageous. And I'm looking at her just living her best life, just kicking it. <laughs> the outfit was slamming. I'm like, so this is how we get down. This is how we go do charity work. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? What is going on? So they, she comes in really looking stunning, but tacking at the same time, because that is not the outfit you would use for working, I mean, painting, whatever. Charlotte shows up in this pristine white outfit. They came in the street. I'm like, and what was so funny about the scene, I think that's why I was laughing, when I was taking notes in the wee hours in the morning, because that's when I get up, and I was like, well, this is toned up, and like, I don't know if it was like 10 or 15 seconds later, LTW was like, well, yeah, this game was tone deaf. I asked for a van and he gave us, a... I was just like, you know what? It was such a shady scene that I enjoyed it because it's a lot easier to poke fun at the show because there's plenty to poke fun at. But in that moment, I was like, I'm getting my hee-haws at their expense. Then I'm looking at, ding a -ling, Miranda, who's like trying so hard to be politically correct and everything else because um, Nia Naya, I can't remember how to, she's got this outfit on with like 500 colors on it. I don't know what kind of outfit she's wearing. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's like, we don't have any food. LTW is like, I got it. Look, she is just living her best life. She is straight kicking it. <laughs> so she's like, I'll get us some food and everything else. And she's got a camera and a whole nine yards. The whole thing was just so fabulous and 
wacky at the same time. <laughs> I was like, what is this? But it made me hee-haw, okay? Because the show needed a little bit of levity. But anyway, so she's concerned because they don't have any lunch. LTW is basically going to save the day. Charlotte, she's still weird. Um, <laughs> but she's like basically trying to secure lunch. So they have a, a, a moment where Nia and her husband have like a little tiff or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I just want to say for the record, I love her kicking. That's on my thumbnail, by the way, because I wanted to show her kicking Miranda in the head. I mean, am I being violent? Am I too violent? Next. <sighs> Seema meets the owner of the club that she couldn't get in with Carrie. He's hot. Next. All right. This is the best scene. So. Steve wants to know about Shay and how long have they been together? Did Carrie introduce them? Um, just the whole big thing. And so Carrie's talking to Steve. She accidentally steps in some paint. But, and while she's, okay, so before I talk about the paint thing, but in this moment, I thought this was a real moment. I really like this scene. I really like this scene because with your, well, you're seeing, you can tell he's heartbroken, but he's, he's trying to get answers. Like, what, what is this? Did you hook her up? Did you, what happened? Right? Like, these are normal questions. These are normal questions, but you can see he's kind of like, he's trying to figure it out. I mean, like, that's a bombshell to drop on someone when you're like Steve, because, you know, in a couple episodes I, ago, I said he's about 85. So when you're 85 and you find out you're getting a divorce, you're, you know, this is like crazy. But, you know, she's looking at him like, Steve, I, like almost like, I don't want to do this. But she was like, I didn't know. It was really, really, I don't know, for whatever reason, I was really drawn into this scene and I was really like Miranda ain't ish like you know she's just a piece of uh, all of this I oh I'm just so done but I just thought it was so interesting and in the scene he was talking about his ring and he said he's never gonna let it go he's never I'm sorry he's not gonna take it off okay He's like, I'm not taking it off and this is an interesting scene I want people to catch this this is how I interpreted it when Carrie sees that he's like not he's not ready to let go, he's not willing to let go. He can't part with from his ring and from his marriage, and she's looking at his sadness and a little bit of patheticness because you know Miranda snatched his his, his pair. Um, my friends are blowing me up. They don't know that I'm on. So um, she snatched his his gonads, um, and she's just not a likable person. And she's like, over Shay. It's so weird. Like, I think I counted all 32 of her teeth at one time. Like, I'm, I'm for real. Like, this is a lot going on with Miranda and her weirdness. So Something because, went wrong. Please try again. What in the world? My phone is possessed. This is nothing but Satan. This is Satan. I'm trying to tell you, Satan, you know what? Look, this is nothing but the spirit of Satan. So anyway, oh my gosh. So anyway, this is the thing. In this scene, when... Carrie is looking at his patheticness, right? And she's seeing the the, the, the sorrow and the, the willingness because she's like, but don't you want happiness? Like, what about you? What about your life? What about, and he's, he's just ready to just, to, I don't know. I think that was the moment when she decides later on that she's like, well, maybe I need to take off the ring. But it was such a sad, sad it was so sad. And so when Carrie gets up and she steps in the paint, she's going to the bathroom to rinse off her shoes. And next thing you know, she drops the ring, right? And I might be saying this out of order, but when she drops that ring and then Steve rescues the ring, and like he said, he said, I'm never taking my ring off. And it was such a sad thing. And I was just kind of like, oh, Miranda is Satan and stupid. So now, let me go on to this. Now, this is my favorite ding -a -ling. Now, first of all, you see to the right, that's LTW with her outfit on, looking fabulous, just living her best life while she's volunteering. <laughs> I was like, this is the best. Because <laughs> I was like, this is how we do this? Because when I used to volunteer at the, fear, um, the food pantry, <laughs> like in comfortable shoes and warm clothes and jacket, and I got my coffee and the whole nine yards, like so I can have my comfort, right? Oh, this was interesting. So now look, Charlotte, 
is still dealing with tampon gate. Lily's like, it's stuck up in there. I can't find the string. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just kind of like, what was so funny was, which didn't make any sense, was they went to the porta potty. I just don't see Charlotte have letting her daughter or whatever, the brat, go into a porta potty. And I, I, just, I just, you know, I'm just saying. I mean, I don't know. Do the rich people use um, porta potties? Somebody let me know. Do rich people use porta potties? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I just want to know. Probably might as want to know. But in the process, because remember, let's go back. <laughs> she shaded the F out of her friends. Like, I'm not like you. Blah, blah, blah. I don't get this. I don't get that, right? Well, homegirl, in this process, while she's dealing with her dingbat disrespectful daughter, <laughs> gets a flash, period. <laughs> She's walking around with a big red spot in the back. I'm like, it was big. <laughs> and I was like, perfect. Charlotte is walking around with a big <laughs> See? <laughs> and I'm like, that's what happens when you run your mouth. So anyway, I was here for that because, and you knew it was going to happen. You knew this was going to happen because she spent all that time shading them in the beginning, right? And then she shows up in this super white outfit while they're talking about tampon gate with the disrespectful daughter. Tampon gate. I'm telling you, I should have had an animated tampon. Oh, my gosh. So, anyway, Miranda and her weirdness. Do I have one more slide? Yeah. So, they're standing at the food truck while, you know, Charlotte was talking before. This is before she. Well, actually, I think she did find out that she had the, the situation. I can't remember. Nevertheless, they're talking to her. And, and Naya was like, yeah, we didn't do that in my house. And I was like, yeah, because when I was 15, that was practically like like a weapon, like a tampon. It was like a full on weapon. It was it was it, it, I, I don't know what that was. It was a monster. This was an oversized monster. Like we did not get down with it. That was much later in life. So now, apparently, I'm my friends are blowing up my phone, and I should have turned my phone off. But I'm telling you, this moment when she hit the big wet spot, they had to take off their their sweater and tie it around her. I was cracking up. You got Dingoling Miranda, who just doesn't know how to read the room, is sitting there excited because Shay called her, and she's now playing games. Like I don't want to call. I don't want myself available. Blah, blah blah. I'm like, you're too old for that because if well, I don't, you never know what you'll do when you're in that situation. But all I can think of is if I'm 55 years old and if I'm on a dating market again, who wants to play all these games? If Bob or whatever calls me, hey, how's it going, Bob? But then again, because she's so stupid, she, she's just, you know, showing all her teeth and carrying on. I'm just kind of like, you know what? Maybe that's, the I, don't, I don't know. The, the, she's whacked out. We're almost done. This, we're almost done. So, Karen returns home. I just picked this picture I saw online because she looks really pretty here, to be honest. But basically, um, she didn't have a bun. Um, I just like the picture. But what she did was she gets home after the whole situation, you know, volunteering. And she takes off her ring and she texts Peter. That's the good looking guy that she goes on a date but doesn't really go on a date because she's playing like the girl who cried date <laughs> instead of Wolf is date. Um so she texts Peter and I presume, I guess she must have said, hey, can we go out? Because at this point, I couldn't read what was going on. It was too fast. It was early in the morning. It was blurry. My eyes hadn't like focused or whatever. You know, it was a situation. All right, next. Then in the end, you know, and just like that. So basically, Seema and Carrie, they be clubbing. You like how I threw that in there? They be clubbing. So um, they return back to the scene of the crime because remember, let me see. Oh, I went too far back. Homie, she meets this guy and finds out that he is the owner of the club. And so I'm presuming they went on a date and the rest is history. Um, he calls Seema the boss. So that's the end. So let's get to the, these takeaways so I can end this. There is no justice for Steve. I mean, like they literally made him 85. They took his manhood down there. He has been emasculated. He does this weird yelling thing. He doesn't, he is, he's, he can't let go of hateful, evil dingbat Miranda. Um, she just sucks balls. She all the way sucks. 
I don't even really understand why Charlotte had to be in this episode. I guess they wanted to introduce Tampon Gate. I, I don't know. It was kind of like filler scenes, to be honest. Um, the writers are still trolling us with this whacked out storyline. I think they think we are stupid. And um, I, I think for those of you who are watching this, everybody should just write in and just say you need a new writer. You can go ahead and recommend me because I could make it much more interesting and much more realistic because number one, what they should be exploring in this show, I don't know why my friends are blowing me up right now. <laughs> like there's a ton of text about this, this bingo thing. So look, there's a lot that should have been discussed with Big. Okay, because that's like real style. How do you move on? They didn't do it. There's stuff that should be discussed before Miranda just jumps into her full lesbianism, right? Because it all happened at once. They didn't finesse us. They didn't develop the characters. They did not develop the storyline. So we got all the woke moments. This time we got a guy that's like, the Holocaust is a hoax. Like, I still don't even understand. It came out like pure Tourette syndrome. Like, I don't even understand what his problem was and why. Like, why was that part of the show? Like, I didn't make the connection. Somebody's going to have to let me know because it was missed. I, I missed it. It was just like, why? Why? Like, it wasn't even funny. Of all things, like like the Holocaust, one of the most egregious things that happened in history. <sighs> anyway, so that's just where I'm at with it. So look, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, all right, whatever. The, the show is the show. I mean, like they have trolled us like the entire season. And this is what I would say. The writers, should they get a season two? I, I They probably will. There's a lot that needs to change. They need to develop Charlotte, okay? Like, take her out of these stupid dresses. They need to develop that character. They need to explore what it's like when you are grieving. Because the way she found her husband, that is traumatic. That was traumatic, okay? Although I don't understand why she didn't call the ambulance. Um. Miranda might need to be committed to some sort of institution because I think she has de-evolved as an intelligent woman. Like she's all the way stupid now. Like I already said that Charlotte was on the sucks train. Like she sucks. Like I'm on the Charlotte sucks train. I don't know what they're going to do with Steve. They either give him his manhood back and, and make it intelligent or they need to write him off the show altogether because what they've done to him. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Lily is a brat. Next, um, I think they need to do, and I know they had to scramble with the whole Anthony situation. They had to do a better job of integrating him a little bit more because he's actually kind of funny. I didn't understand that scene with the Justin guy. I'm still talking about it because I'm like, it didn't even make sense. Like he wanted to come, he just wanted to say that the Holocaust was a hoax. And I'm like, why? And there's, there's a lot more that goes into it, but I feel like with the ageism and everything else, like the writers have to write the shit for season two. Because all they did was piss off Gen X. Because I was all the way like, how dare you take our show and murder it? They all the way murdered it. How do you murder that show? There's a certain shows that should not be destroyed. If you're going to take on something so iconic, you have to do better. All right, so look. That's it for me. Um, all right. Black opinionated woman out.